Nicholasville police officers are searching for two men who broke into a Lexington police officer's SUV and stole four guns. A final farewell to a Marine veteran and her children killed in a fire in northern Kentucky last week. Rain and wind on the increase across central and eastern Kentucky. We'll track the raindrops into where you live on Defender just ahead. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 4. Welcome to WKYT News at 4. I'm Jennifer Palumbo. We are in for a lot of rain and wind over the next few days. Here's a live picture of downtown Lexington from one of our sky cams where it's in the upper 50s and dry right now. Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey is tracking our rain chances, and Chris, a lot of other people are seeing rain right now. Yeah, folks across southern Kentucky, Jennifer, already getting in on some steady rains, and that is a sign of things to come later tonight. It's everybody getting in on the act as a, a southern system throws a lot of juice across central and eastern Kentucky. We're looking at Defender now. We've got it in motion over the past couple of hours. Notice how the shield of rain slowly but surely beginning to lift onto the north. So parts of the Somerset area, London, Corbin, back into Campbellsville. We've had some showers throughout the day, but the leading edge of the rains getting as far north now as parts of Danville into Boyle County, Lancaster, and Stanford getting in on some rains as well. Let's broaden out the view. Let's take you down into the volunteer state of Tennessee. Notice how we start to see some of the darker green showing up in south of Huntsville into Alabama. Now we start to get in on at least some scattered thunderstorms. Area of low pressure that is very photogenic showing up right now across parts of Louisiana. That's going to slowly lift its way due northward right on top of the Mississippi River Valley over the next few days. So look at that big stream of juice that is coming right out of the Gulf of Mexico into Kentucky. We've hit the fast forward button on Defender. Look at your timeline. Watch how the rains increase as we go through the overnight. So middle of the night into early tomorrow morning, rain becoming widespread across the entire area. Eventually gusty winds and maybe some thunder and lightning joining the party. And we're keeping a very close eye on the weekend. Yes, it's Halloween weekend. It's Breeders' Cup weekend. It's Kentucky, Tennessee weekend. A lot going on. And Jennifer, it is a busy seven-day forecast when I come back here in 15 minutes. We're tracking a developing story right now in Madison County. Kentucky State Police are working a deadly crash on Meadowbrook Road. That's about six miles from Richmond near the EKU farm. Police say a vehicle went off the road and struck a power pole, splitting it in half. One person had to be cut from the car and airlifted to the University of Kentucky Medical Center. No other details have been released. We'll bring you more information from Madison County as we get it. Police are trying to figure out who stole four guns from a Lexington police officer's vehicle parked in Nicholasville overnight. Investigators believe two suspects targeted the unmarked special response unit vehicle on Autumn Hills Way around four this morning. WKYT's Mark Barber is in Jessamyn County with the latest. It's our top story at four. Nicholasville police officers say someone in the home saw the two men after they broke into the police officer's SUV. We're told they called for help, but before the police officer could get there, the two men grabbed four guns and bullets and took off. The stolen guns belonged to a Lexington officer in the emergency response unit. His SUV was parked outside his home in Nicholasville. Officers are now talking to neighbors and searching the area for anything the burglars left behind. Investigators are also running serial numbers on the stolen weapons, trying to find them before anyone gets hurt. They don't know what the missing guns will be used for, but they say it's possible they will be sold. In the day and age we live right now, we are being targeted by some of the population that don't like the job we do and want to do what they can to undercut us. And it's possible this was targeted. It's possible it was random. It's just too early in the investigation to tell. While officers say the break-ins are very unsettling for them, they say there is no danger to the people who live nearby. They say that they are working off a very limited suspect description to find the two men. They say all they have at this time is that both men were wearing sweatshirts. In Nicholasville, Mark Barber, WKYT. We asked police if the weapons were in plain sight in the officer's SUV and why it was parked on the street and not in a driveway or garage, but they haven't gotten back to us. Police did say they found a flashlight mount that the men dropped after they ran from the SUV. They are now dusting it for fingerprints. A Marine veteran who died trying to save her children from a house fire in northern Kentucky was laid to rest this afternoon. Lori Doppelhauer died in a fire in Maysville last week along with three of her sons, ages 10, 3, and 1. A neighbor also died in the fire. 
Patriot Guard riders escorted her body from Somerset to Camp Nelson National Cemetery in Jessamine County this afternoon. We'll have more from Camp Nelson on WKYT News at 5. It's Breeders' Cup week in Lexington with a lot going on at Keeneland Racecourse and around the city. Coming up at 6.20, University of Kentucky coach John Calipari will draw the post positions for two of the Breeders' Cup races, one expected to include Triple Crown winner American Pharaoh. And you can enjoy live music in downtown Lexington at Cheapside Park and the Courthouse Plaza. We have a full list of the events going on all week long. Just go to WKYT.com. And be sure, to, be sure to join Dave Baker and me on the CW Lexington tomorrow and Wednesday morning from 7 to 10 for our exclusive Breakfast at the Breeders' Cup. We'll have in-depth coverage to get you ready for the big weekend of racing. Our reporters are working on a number of other stories for WKYT starting at 4.30. Amber Philpott joins us from the newsroom with a look at some of the news in progress. Good afternoon, Amber. Good afternoon to you, Jennifer. Family and friends are remembering a young Central Kentucky woman who died in a weekend crash. Police say 20-year-old Tyler Misbach died when her car and another car crashed on Highway 1295 in Garrett County. The Danville native played softball at Boyle County High School and recently attended Bellarmine University. You'll hear from Misbach's high school softball coach on WKYT News at 5.30. A man and his girlfriend were in court today after being arrested in connection to a murder. Police found Edward Van Wormer dead at his Pulaski County home last month. His son, Jedediah, and his girlfriend, Amanda Braddock, were later arrested in North Carolina. We'll have more from the courtroom ahead at 4.30. And Lexington received more than $3 million today for continuation of the city's trail project. The money will be used for the Midland section of Town Branch Commons. It will start at Thoroughbred Park and run about a half a mile down Midland Avenue. Leaders say it will promote alternate transportation by attracting walkers, runners, and bikers. We'll have more details on the trail, head that will, trail ahead that will connect the Town Branch Trail to the Legacy Trail. That's coming up on WKYT News at 6. That is a look at some of the news in progress. Jennifer, back to you. Thanks, Amber. That is some stories making headlines across the nation at four. A judge has ordered a psychological evaluation for a woman accused of crashing her car into a crowd at Oklahoma State University's homecoming parade, killing four people and injuring dozens more. A judge set bond at $1 million for Adacia Chambers and ordered her to undergo a mental evaluation. Chambers faces four counts of second-degree murder. Today, authorities identified the child killed as two-year-old Nash Lucas, whose mother is a sophomore at OSU. Officials are searching for answers into what caused a whale-watching boat to capsize, killing five people off the coast of Canada. Five Britons have been confirmed dead after the ship sank off the west coast of Vancouver Island yesterday. 27 people were on board at the time. One person is still missing, and the rest were rescued by residents. Investigators are trying to figure out what caused the boat to crash on a calm, clear, and sunny day. Stocks starting the week mixed on Wall Street. The Dow down 24 points to close at 17,623. The Nasdaq picked up three. Toyota remains the top automaker in world sales after the first nine months of the year. Toyota sold nearly 7.5 million vehicles, outpacing rivals General Motors and Volkswagen. Volkswagen overtook Toyota for January to June, the first time it had come out on top. But its sales may suffer because of last month's emissions scandal. Detroit-based GM was the top-selling automaker for more than seven decades until Toyota passed it in 2008. The new sign-up season for coverage under the Affordable Care Act begins this Sunday, and you can start browsing on healthcare.gov this week. The upgraded website features a new calculator that estimates total costs based on expected medical needs. Premiums are expected to go up in 2016, and the tax penalty for people who remain uninsured next year will jump to $695, or 2.5% of taxable income. Online education is growing in popularity, and now a new app is offering the chance to earn a college degree on your iPad or tablet at a low cost without ever setting foot inside a classroom. Chris Martinez shows us how it works. Virtually anywhere he goes, Colin Gray can work towards earning his college degree at his own pace. I don't really feel the pressure. I set my own deadlines and I'm able to work towards them. 
Colin is using an app called MyPath, offered through Brandman University. There are no books. Everything is done on his tablet, even exams, which are monitored by instructors via webcam. It was designed with non-traditional students in mind, especially those with busy work schedules. You can find yourself with a spare 20 minutes, and out comes the tablet, and I can, I can work on a paper or, or complete a little quiz or just do something towards my schoolwork. More colleges and universities are offering online options. According to the U.S. Department of Education, one in four college students take at least some of their courses online. Brandman is hoping to set their program apart by offering an app with a unique payment plan. For $2,700, students can earn all the credits they can handle within six months. This is, provides an incentive for students to finish as quickly as possible. If they finish in two and a half years, a bachelor's degree will cost $13,500. For Colin, studying on his schedule is paying off. I'm hoping I can have my degree completed within 12 months, so by May of 2016. A pace he says wouldn't be possible any other way. Chris Martinez, CBS News, Irvine, California. Brandman University is an accredited nonprofit college. About 100 students were part of the beta testing for the MyPath app, and school officials say 500 more students have signed up to begin taking the online courses. Facebook now admits its app was draining iPhone batteries, and now there's a fix. Facebook has released a new version of its app after an outcry from users who complained the app was draining their batteries even when they weren't using it. We start off with a crash in Manowar and Gladman Way. It's blocking one lane of the outer loop of Manowar right now. Uh, with about a seven, eight minute slowdown approaching that, there's some fluids in the roadway, some antifreeze that firefighters have to clean up. That's part of the problem at that intersection. And then downtown with all the Breeders' Cup Festival activities, some street closures. Right now, things seem to be manageable. We'll see what happens here in the next hour and a half. Now back to you in the studio. Thanks, Don. To become a WKYT Live driver and download the Waze app, go to WKYT.com. Under the News tab, click on Traffic for more information. Breeders' Cup Week is officially upon us. Deanne Stevens is out and about today at Keeneland with more on what's happening in Lexington. Hi, Deanne. Good afternoon, guys, from Keeneland, where this is a very exciting week. We've been talking about it for months and months now. Breeders' Cup Week is finally here. We are here with Kara Heisenbuttel. And, Kara, this is, this is it. I mean, I said we have been talking about it, but this is really it. It's down to the wire now. We have prepped and worked tirelessly all year, and we're so excited for this week to be here. How many people are we expecting here this week, in and out of Keeneland? Because I know there's so many tours and breakfast opportunities and folks seeing the, the horses on the track. I think over the course of the week, including Breeders' Cup weekend, we could see as many as 150,000 people here. How exciting is that for you guys who work at Keeneland to see this magnificent place? You know, it's incredible because we feel good about what we do, and now we get to showcase that for the world. All right, speaking of showcasing, tell us where we are right now because this place where we are is uh, was not used much throughout the meet. I think opening weekend, maybe? Uh huh. Um, so we're in the Saddling Paddock Chalet, and this is a special chalet that was built for Breeders' Cup weekend. So guests will have seats in this room on Friday and Saturday and have an amazing view of the paddock here and get to see all the Breeders' Cup horses. Okay, this is where I want my permanent view to be. This is beautiful. Uh, right outside the paddock here, and you can see folks coming and going. Now, coming up at 450, we're going to step inside and give you a tour of what it's like in there, what folks might be in there this coming weekend, and all of the things that are happening here at Keeneland. There are many opportunities for you to be a part of Breeders' Cup Week here at Keeneland this week, and we'll tell you more about that when we return at 450. I'm Deanne Stevens out and about at Keeneland. Back to you guys. It's time for better living, health education, and consumer news that impacts your life. A new study suggests eating processed meat, such as ham or sausage, can be just as dangerous as smoking. And red meat could also be a contributing factor in developing cancer. The study was released by the World Health Organization's Cancer Group. It classifies processed meat as carcinogenic to humans with the potential to cause colon cancer. Red meat is classified as probably carcinogenic. We'll have more details on the study in Better Living at 5 o'clock. The American Academy of Pediatrics is now recommending banning sales of all tobacco products, including e-cigarettes, to people under the age of 21. Doctors warn the growing popularity of e-cigarettes is threatening to addict a new generation of teens. 
The Academy also has new recommendations to make youth football safer. They include enforcing proper tackling rules with zero tolerance for head first hits and expanding non tackling leagues. Women in labor have long been warned not to eat or drink anything, but that may be changing. Marley Hall explains. There's a little nose right there. Hannah Peck is expecting her first child any day now. Oh my gosh, her face. It's long been recommended that expectant mothers like Hannah fast while delivering. The idea that you can't eat or drink anything during labor doesn't make sense to me because labor, for me, is a physically strenuous activity that could last days. The concern has been that if a woman needs to undergo general anesthesia for a cesarean delivery, she might inhale regurgitated liquid or food. But according to a new study from the American Society of Anesthesiologists, that almost never happens thanks to improvements in anesthesia. Researchers say eating a light meal may even be beneficial. Obstetrician Jacques Moritz of Weill Cornell New York Presbyterian says the findings are revolutionary. Because the woman is going to have more energy and the baby is going to have more energy when it comes out. So it's a very important study. Hannah says knowing she can eat is a big relief. That I'm now able to drink or eat if I need to, if I need an extra bump of energy during labor is great news. She says just having that option makes the whole process sound less scary. Marley Hall, CBS News, New York. Researchers warn patients with a history of eclampsia and other complications will still have to abstain from eating during labor due to the risk factors.